Okay, in this video, we are going to wrap up the Unit 3.2 notes on cell respiration by looking at Topic 5. Um, in Topic 5, we're going to be talking about um, some anaerobic processes, some anaerobic pathways. These are anaerobic means that it doesn't use oxygen. So these are non-oxygen processes that are taking place in organisms. That, that, don't, that do not require oxygen, but are still going to allow ATP to be made. Um, and so there's two different things we're gonna look at. We're gonna look at something called fermentation, which is anaerobic, it doesn't require oxygen. And we're gonna look at something called anaerobic respiration, which is like aerobic respiration, which we've been talking a lot about in these notes. But um, in this case, it's, it's, it's respiration without using oxygen. Um, and so we'll see a lot of similarities between um, what we've been talking about and, and what that is. But let's start with fermentation. So <clears throat> in the absence of oxygen, if you don't have oxygen, um, <clears throat> you're gonna need an, a non-oxygen pathway to produce some ATP. And so a common thing that cells can do is they can um, take glycolysis, which is the first part of cell respiration where glucose is breaking down into pyruvate, in the cytoplasm of the cell, which does make a little bit of ATP. They can take glycolysis and pair it with something called fermentation um, to allow the cell to continually make ATP without any oxygen having to be used. And so basically there's uh, what we're gonna, there's two types of fermentation you guys need to know, and I'll, I'll explain the difference in a second. But it's, in both cases, we're gonna be doing glycolysis plus a certain type of reaction that's going to allow us to regenerate NAD+, because that's gonna become the, the problem when there's no oxygen. Um, because during glycolysis, I'll just explain this now real quick. During glycolysis, there are some electrons being stolen by NAD+. If you guys remember, as part of glycolysis, there's um, two NADHs that are produced. Um, NAD+, swoops in and takes a pair of high energy electron um, twice during glycolysis. So you end up with two NADHs. Um, now the problem becomes if, if you're just doing glycolysis, which is great, if you wanna make a little bit of ATP without using oxygen, you can do glycolysis. Um, the problem though is sooner or later, you're going to run out of NAD pluses because all the NAD pluses are gonna become NADHs. And all these NADHs are gonna be holding on to these high energy electrons that they stole, which is they, they, it's required that they do that as part of glycolysis. They need to take these electrons. But then if there's no oxygen, these NADHs have nowhere to put these electrons because they can't take it to the electron transport chain, either because there's no oxygen available to accept the electrons at the end of the electron transport chain, because that's what's supposed to happen. It's oxygen supposed to be the final acceptor of these electrons. And if there's no oxygen, well, they're not gonna be able to drop them off there. Um, or if there's no mitochondria to begin with, um, where are they supposed to put these electrons? And so that is going to then lead to this process called fermentation, which is going to allow them to give their electrons to someone so that they can go back to being NAD plus so that you can continue doing more glycolysis um, and continually make a little bit of ATP um, without running out of NAD plus um, after taking all those electrons. So let's look at both types and maybe this will make more sense. Let's look at, um, uh, let's actually look at lactic acid fermentation first. So there's two types of fermentation. There's lactic acid fermentation and there's alcohol mm -hmm. fermentation. Lactic acid fermentation is a little bit easier. Um, and so what's gonna happen in lactic acid fermentation is uh, you're gonna have glycolysis. So that's what this represents here is glucose is turning into two pyruvate molecules. And in the process of that happening, you're making a net of two ATP. And there's two NADHs that are produced. We talked about this a lot already. Um, but like I was saying, the problem is if, you, if, if you're just doing glycolysis and the pyruvate is not going to the mitochondria because there is no mitochondria or there's no oxygen available, then um, and you're just gonna continually repeat glycolysis, you're gonna end up running out of NADHs, I mean NAD pluses, because all those NAD pluses are taking these electrons becoming NADHs and they're supposed to go drop off those electrons in the mitochondria, but if there's no oxygen, they're not gonna be able to do that. So what happens is in, in lactic acid fermentation is there's a, a reaction where um, there's an enzyme who will allow pyruvate to actually take those electrons back. So after you make pyruvate, those pyruvate molecules will actually take those electrons from NADH um, 
and uh, uh, allow NADH to go back to being NAD plus. And so that is when, um, so in, in that process, pyruvate is being um, reduced. Pyruvate is gaining those electrons from NADH. NADH is losing those electrons, going back to being NAD+. And when pyruvate gains those electrons, pyruvate turns into this molecule here called lactate, which is also called lactic acid. Um, and so that's what's going to happen during lactic acid fermentation, is we're basically doing glycolysis. And then in lactic acid fermentation, we're doing this reaction where pyruvate will take those electrons back and each of those pyruvates that will that were produced during glycolysis will turn into lactic acid. These molecules here, two of these molecules called lactic acid or lactate, um, and that allows NAD plus to be regenerated. We say that NAD plus is now being regenerated so that you can continue doing glycolysis and you can continue um, making a little bit of ATP from glucose. Um, and so as long as you keep doing fermentation with that, you can keep doing glycolysis to make some ATP. And none of this requires oxygen. So that's the pro. The con is that lactic acid is actually toxic to the cell. Lactic acid will um, kill the cell if it accumulates too much in the cell. And so then your body has to get rid of lactic acid, um, which is a whole nother problem. Uh, and so that's, but that's at least better than dying immediately. If, if, you're, if you don't have enough oxygen, you, this is a last resort here. You might as well do some glycolysis with some lactic acid fermentation to make a little bit of ATP so you can try to stay alive. Um, and then hopefully there's more oxygen in the near future. Um, this type of fermentation happens in humans, for example. Um, in humans, um, your guys' cells sometimes, when you guys are doing a high-intensity exercise or when you're doing a lot of exercise and you're not able to, sometimes you're not able to physically get enough oxygen to all of your cells, when that happens, especially your muscle cells who are using a lot of ATP or requiring a lot of cell respiration when you're, when you're physically active, um, your muscle cells have two choices. They can either just give up and die because they're not getting enough oxygen and they can't make any ATP, or they can now shift towards doing a lot more lactic acid fermentation where they're just gonna do glycolysis, which makes a pathetic amount of ATP, but still a little bit of ATP, which is better than zero ATP and then um, produces lactic, results in lactic acid being pr produced as a result. Um, and that's why, uh, and, and, and that's actually why when you guys are exercising, you, your muscles get sore. When your muscles get sore, it's because your muscles were doing a lot of lactic acid fermentation, creating a lot of lactic acid, which is killing your cell, your muscle cells, which is why you feel sore. You feel sore because your muscle cells were dying because of this lactic acid you were making. Um, but then your body is supposed to try to get that lactic acid out of your muscle tissue into your blood so that you can get rid of it. Um, but that's what's happening, lactic acid fermentation. There's also some um, certain types of fungus and bacteria that can also do lactic acid fermentation um, along with like human cells, mammal cells can do this too. Um, now, the other type of fermentation is called uh, alcohol fermentation, and this is very similar, but there's one difference. And so in alcohol fermentation, um, the cell is doing glycolysis, just like I showed you earlier, making pyruvate. Um, but the problem, again, becomes if you're just doing glycolysis, you're going to run out of NAD+. If there's no oxygen, someone's got to take these electrons, and it's not going to be oxygen if there's no oxygen. And so what happens here is um, in cells that do alcohol fermentation, what they do is they take that pyruvate, and there's a chemical reaction that turns it into this molecule called acetaldehyde, which is a two-carbon molecule. So you went from pyruvate, a three-carbon molecule, to acetaldehyde, which is a two-carbon molecule, which actually resulted in the production of CO2. So each of those guys becomes these guys, and you made two CO2 molecules. And now you have this guy. And then acetaldehyde is going to be the acceptor of these electrons. So acetaldehyde is going to be reduced and gain those electrons from NADH. And NADH is going to be oxidized and turned back into NAD plus when it loses those electrons and acetaldehyde gains those electrons, you now have NAD plus again, and you can keep doing glycolysis. And then that acetaldehyde, when it gains the electrons, it becomes ethanol. Ethanol is um, alcohol. This is the alcohol that's in alcoholic beverages. Um, this is also toxic to cells. Um, so again, there's pros and cons to this. You are making some ATP without any oxygen, which is better than making no ATP, but you are making this chemical that's killing the cell. And so then those cells have to get rid of this. Um, 
And so there's a, a variety of cells that can do this. Our cells do not do alcohol fermentation. So your guys' cells do not start making alcohol when there's no oxygen. Um, but there are different uh, types of organisms that do alcohol fermentation. There's certain types of bacteria that do alcohol fermentation. Um, uh, another popular example is yeast. Yeast cells um, do alcohol fermentation. This is actually how they make wine and beer and other alcoholic beverages is they just take a bunch of yeast cells and give them a bunch of sugar and then give them no oxygen and force them to do alcohol fermentation where they basically are turning glucose into alcohol. It's crazy. They're taking sugar and turning it into alcohol. Um, but that's what they're doing. Uh, and so that's, that's alcohol fermentation. And this, the difference here between this and lactic acid fermentation is there is CO2 being made in alcohol fermentation because we are losing some carbons in this process of going from um, pyruvates, which had three carbons each, to acetaldehyde and alcohol, which each have two carbons each. So there's some CO2 that's made, whereas in lactic acid fermentation, there's no carbon dioxide that's being made because we're not losing any carbons. That's the big difference. But both accomplish the same goal. And what's the goal? The goal is to regenerate NAD+, to find someone who's going to take these electrons away from NADH so he can go back to being NAD+, so that you can keep doing glycolysis to make a little bit of ATP so that you're not dying or the cell's not dying. Um, so that's what fermentation is. And in this picture here, it kind of shows you after doing glycolysis, you end up with pyruvate. And so a lot of cells have two choices. They can um, take that pyruvate. And if there's a mitochondria, if you're a cell that has a mitochondria, like eukaryotic cells, like our cells, they can send that pyruvate to the mitochondria. And then you can do acet acetyl co I mean, you can do pyruvate oxidation and the Krebs cycle um, and make a lot more ATP if you continue on to steal more electrons and pass them on to the electron transport chain and all that stuff that we talked about in topics two and three. Um, but that's if you have a mitochondria, and that's only if oxygen is present. Then you can do aerobic cell respiration. But if there's no oxygen present, the pyruvate, act, even if you have a mitochondria, when our cells run out of oxygen, they are going to not, they won't let the pyruvate go into the mitochondria because they already know it's a lost cause. They know there's not enough oxygen. They won't let the pyruvate be transported into the mitochondria, and instead they'll start doing fermentation with the pyruvate, which is going to turn the pyruvate either into ethanol which is alcohol, or lactate, which is lactic acid, um, depending on the type of cell and the type of organism. Some organisms do alcohol fermentation, some of them do lactic acid fermentation, um, which will then allow you to still do glycolysis, but you're gonna make a lot less ATP. Um, so that's, that's fermentation. And then the last thing in here is anaerobic respiration. Um, this is uh, complicated, um, but for the purpose of this class, um, it doesn't have to be complicated. All I need you guys to know is that there are some bacteria and some archaea bacteria. So the, these are prokaryotes, prokaryotic organisms um, who are really weird. These are some really special prokaryotic organisms that um, can do cell respiration. Basically, the full-on cell respiration that we were talking about, like the complete breakdown of sugar, um, to make a lot of ATP with stuff like glycolysis, but also the Krebs cycle and pyruvate oxidation, the electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation, all that stuff. Like they can do that stuff, but oxygen is not the final electron Ooh. acceptor. These, organ these special prokaryotic cells have evolved for there to be something n that's not oxygen accepting the electrons at the end of the electron transport chain. So they also have an electron transport chain and they do chemiosmosis, they make a lot of ATP, but the difference is there, there's someone other than oxygen who's accepting those electrons at the very end of cell respiration. It's not oxygen. They're doing it all without oxygen. And instead, um, it depends, um, there's other types of molecules that they're using to accept those electrons. Some of them are sulfates or nitrates or sulfur atoms or even carbon dioxide molecules that they have evolved to be the, the people who are going to accept the electrons at the end of the electron transport chain. Um, our cells can't do this. Most organisms on this planet can't do this. This is a very special process for very special types of prokaryotic cells that can do this. And we call it anaerobic respiration because it basically is cell respiration like the whole shebang, making a lot of ATP, breaking down glucose, um, doing all the electron transport chain and all that stuff. 
um, but without oxygen being required because there's someone else who's going to take the electrons. And so that's all I need you guys to know about anaerobic respiration is that it's pretty cool. You can do everything, the whole thing, you make a lot of ATP, it's better than fermentation because you're making way more ATP, but there's someone other than oxygen taking those electrons. Um, and so, uh, so that's the difference. So in fermentation, just to make it this clear, in fermentation, you're just doing glycolysis along with fermentation to make a little bit of ATP. But in anaerobic respiration, these are organisms who are going to do like the whole thing, like glycolysis and Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain and chemiosmosis, and they're going to make a lot of ATP, but there's not oxygen who's there accepting the electrons at the very end. Um, it's some it's some other molecule, um, which is an anaerobic process. They don't need oxygen to do it. Um, so that leads us to this last slide here is that um, just knowing that there's um, there's these organisms called anaerobes. Anaerobes are organisms who can live without oxygen. So they technically don't need oxygen to stay alive um, because they can just rely solely on fermentation or anaerobic respiration to make ATP. And that's enough ATP to keep those organisms alive. So um, we call those anaerobes. Um, they're non-oxygen requiring life forms on this planet, um, which is not you guys. If you guys hold your breath and stop breathing the oxygen, you're going to die. So you guys can do fermentation, but that's not going to keep you alive very long. These guys, though, you can give them no oxygen and they'll stay alive. Like they're, they're anaerobes. They, they don't need oxygen to stay alive. These other processes are good enough to make the ATP that they need. And so there's two types of anaerobes. There's facultative anaerobes. Facultative anaerobes um, are cool. They can actually switch between aerobic respiration and anaerobic, res um, anaerobic pathways like fermentation or anaerobic respiration, depending on the availability of oxygen. So if there's oxygen available, they'll sometimes use it to do aerobic cell respiration, just like our cells do. But if oxygen is not available, they can just rely on an anaerobic a pathway. And so they, they're, they're kind of flexible. They can do handle if there's oxygen, if there's not oxygen, um, they're, they're good to go. Um, and they can stay alive. Um, and then there's obligate anaerobes. Obligate anaerobes can only survive with no oxygen. So they can survive without oxygen because they're anaerobes but they actually can't survive in the presence of oxygen. Oxygen is actually toxic to their cells. If they are exposed to oxygen, they're gonna, um, they'll die. So we say that they're obligate anaerobes, obligate kind of coming from the word like uh, obligatory or uh, like an obligation. I can't think of words right now. Um, like they, they're, they're obliged. They, ha they have to be in anaerobic conditions to stay alive. Um, and only in the absence of oxygen can they stay alive and rely on these anaerobic pathways to make ATP. Um, but once they get exposed to oxygen, they die. Um, and you might be thinking, well, where on planet Earth is there no oxygen? Um, and these guys, they we find them living in very oxygen-deprived environments, um, sometimes very deep in the ocean, um, where there's very, very low levels of oxygen or very deep in the soil and in the dirt. Um, uh, that are even sometimes in, in certain parts of our bodies where there's very little oxygen, um, they, these guys can survive and be good. Um, so anyway, that's the difference between those different types of anaerobes. And that's what anaerobic um, respiration and fermentation look like, all these processes that don't require oxygen, but you can still make some ATP. Uh, but that's it for this last topic and these unit 3.2 notes. Uh, I'll see you guys later.